Hi, my name is Mark Lejeunesse, and today I'm going to deviate a little bit from the typical videos I put on YouTube. I'm going to talk about this, this setup, uh, this setup I use for everything, for online teaching, for streaming, for YouTube videos, for Teams meetings and Zooms and all that kind of stuff. This is what I use. What you see is what you get. And my philosophy on this uh, goes back to just not wanting to spend a lot of time editing and uh, making videos look good after recording. That always seemed kind of like a gross endeavor to do. And so I converged on this collection of um, hardware and software to kind of uh, facilitate me recording videos uh, quickly with, uh, with lots of dynamics and energy and so for example my routine in the morning could be I walk into my office I'm in my office here at the University I sit down turn on the camera turn on my computer and I can record and I can record like this start off with a splash screen oh hi welcome to a medical and applied entomology let's jump into PowerPoint here Today I'm going to talk about river blindness and black flies that vector uh, the parasite. And you know, I got videos, I got my PowerPoint presentation. And so I'm going to show you guys how I achieve this. Um, some of it is fairly straightforward. You can jump right into it. Uh, I think the hardware is uh, the biggest hang up in terms of creating these high quality videos. At least I think it's high quality. I don't know. I um, I haven't had a complaint yet. <laughs> but um, a, the idea was, again, to just quickly be able to record things. And then once i done recording, when I hit stop on the record button, I could just submit the video or the stream ends. And I never have to do any uh, post-editing, post-processing of the video. I'm just done. And uh, the trade-off, of course, is the um, there's way more prep before the video is made r rather than after. However, the way I have things set up is that when I teach a course, this uh, prep time, the aesthetics of making videos look cool, gets done early in a semester. And then through the rest of the semester, I just recycle and reuse all those tools and shortcuts to uh, quickly record videos and move along with my day. So I'm going to focus on three things. One is the hardware that I use to get this done, two the software, and then I'm going to end with a quick example of how to create a visualization like this in software. Um, which is fairly straightforward. There's nothing really fancy going on. I have, you know, the video, the live feed from the camera. I got a little bit of text here. And then I'm going to throw in a PowerPoint slide. So we will, essentially we'll be creating this bit right here, which I think is like at, at the most bedrock level of videos for teaching online. It would be this, right? You got your face, you got your PowerPoint and you got some other tidbits of information here to provide context. So let's jump in first with the hardware. This is what I see when I'm recording a video. I got my microphone. I got the camera in the corner. I got my little uh, tablet laptop here that does all the recording. And then I got one of these selfie rings that creates the light. And then I got a bunch of dongles to connect all that stuff together. Um, this is the setup I kind of converged with. Uh, I guess it's almost been two years now. I've been teaching online for almost two years. Uh, although in the spring I'll be face to face again, which I'm very excited <laughs> to do. Um, but right now I'm still teaching like this, using uh, this setup. I have an alternative setup, which if you look at my early YouTube videos, it's all done at home. That's because back then, you know, we weren't really allowed to come back to campus. We were uh, under lockdown and quarantine. And so the setup there is slightly different. 
I tend to avoid recording videos at home now because it, it was very disruptive to my family. I mean, I had to get everyone to leave. I had to set up the camera. I was basically filming in my kitchen. And then I had to disassemble all that stuff. And so there was a, like a lot of that energy used to set up, prep, record, dismantle, stash all that stuff so the kids don't destroy my gear. Uh, but in my office, it's very nice. It's just like I prepped it a, a year ago and I haven't touched a thing. Basically, I just sit down and record. And so here are uh, the specifics of the hardware, which uh, I acknowledge right from the start that it's not cheap stuff. Although everything I use is fairly old and dated. At some point, I think it was very expensive. So here's some of the hardware that I use. So first thing, I use a, an actual camera. Right, so I'm not using a webcam, although now you could buy really fancy, nice webcams. Um, I'm using a 10-year-old uh, digital camera, which I bought when I first moved here to Tampa as a fresh, young professor um, with aspirations to take beautiful pictures of creatures. <laughs> Never really did. Um, and so this camera really got underused there were lens problems with it and the battery would die very quickly and so it was super hard to actually use it for anything functional uh, but when the pandemic hit us right we were all kind of stuck in this mad scramble to uh, migrate towards online teaching and i thought oh well uh, this is probably an opportunity for me to kind of reuse this old camera that i had um, to record uh, my lectures. I just wanted to do something different. I didn't really want to use my webcam. It seemed like very awkward. Um, but I had this nice camera here that was a uh, that I could probably rig up to use for for my courses. You know, in the end I kind of used the migration towards online teaching as like an opportunity to catch up on how to do cool videos. It's something I always wanted to do, never had the time, and so now I was kind of forced into a situation where I had to figure, figure it all out on the fly. So I used this old camera, 10 years old. Cost-wise now, it's not, they're not making these things anymore, uh, but I think you could get a refurbished one without a lens for about 150 bucks. So it's still pretty pricey. Um, Lens-wise, I'm not using the uh, generic lens that came with the camera, which would be totally fine under normal situations. But because I'm, I'm in my office, I'm basically in a low-light environment. I have no natural light in here. Um, I, that lens just doesn't work good. It just doesn't capture the light. Everything kind of looks fuzzy. And... Um, this 55 millimeter, millimeter lens is fantastic because it has a large, very large aperture that allows to ca catch a lot of light. And so you may not see it, but it, this room is actually fairly low light. The light is on my face is actually coming from my monitors. And of course, I got the little selfie light, but the selfie light is not um, directly on me. It's reflecting off the wall like that and then I have these little embellishment lights in the back I got a couple of LEDs and then I got a lamp um, and the beauty of this lens also is that uh, it captures a nice image I mean that's the diff real difference between a webcam and a digital camera a proper digital camera is the quality of the image you get this nice effect of like the background is fuzzy. This is a real background. Right, these are like these little lights that I got here. I forget what that, it's called like a bokeh effect or something like that. You know, if you got a, an iPhone, whenever you take a portrait mode picture, 
it digitizes the background to make it look fuzzy. But if you use a proper lens camera, um, that process just comes naturally through the image like this. Um, the disadvantages of using old gear is the camera has a bunch of dead pixels and you may not quite see it. But let me just turn off the lights and then it'll reveal <laughs> the dead pixels. So now really there's next to no light in this room and then I'm just gonna turn off my monitors. Right, there's no light here. This is kind of like a spooky, <laughs> spooky effect. Uh, but here are the dead pixels. There's a red one right here, right? There's another one right here that bothers me a lot. I always want to eat it. Uh, there's another one over here that pops out a lot because I filter the image. I mean, it's old gear. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. Um, this setup though, <laughs> with the lights in the back and all that is very cute and for great for YouTube videos, but it looks very silly when you're in more professional meetings. And so when I have a professional meeting that I need to do on Teams or on Zoom, you know, when I need to look more uh, respectful, you know, I turn on the regular lights and then I'm like this, oh, serious Mark. Yes. Yes. Very nice. That's me pretending as though I, <laughs> I'm involved in the meeting. Um, okay, this is turning out to be a, a silly video. Okay, back to uh, my PowerPoint here. Um, okay, so there's two problems with using like a real camera to record uh, videos, using it as like a fake webcam is uh, recording, like the memory storage of rec actually recording a video and energy. I mean, this is an old camera. The battery for it lasts probably 20 minutes and then it takes like five days to recharge. And so I needed solutions to fix those two problems. And so what I needed was one, a way to just capture the feed from the video, not touch the camera and press record and have it record onto the disc on the camera, but actually just a live feed the video onto the computer. And luckily, um, this camera does have two options for live feed. It does have an HDMI output, but it's an old fashioned HDMI where the feed is not clean. And by not clean, I mean like it has like the you know, the crosshairs of the image and it has like little uh, diagnostics at the top and it tells you all the um, options and settings. You see all that in the video. That's not, that's not a clean feed. You know, I'm not creating a live footage scary movie here. I just want a nice, I just want the image. And luckily uh, Canon, right at the beginning of the pandemic provided a, um, firmware update for the camera to allow the, a clean feed to be passed through the USB port. So now I have a USB cable basically connected to the computer, which provides a live feed. And so all I got to do is turn on the camera and it automatically uh, feeds the image into the computer, which uh, then I could record. Now that may not be an option for you um, if you're using a camera like this, you might be stuck with a camera that only provides live feed through an HDMI port. And you, for that, you're gonna need a, um, a video capture device. So I've used this before, where essentially there's an HDMI in and an HDMI out, and then it also outputs into a USB form, which you could then record uh, on your computer. This is what like gamers use when they're playing video games. They have this thing that helps them record their uh, videos. It's just called a HDMI capture device. Um, it gets super hot. I mean, that thing is just working around the clock <laughs> to get it. So make sure you have it on a cold surface. 
the other uh, problem, the energy problem, um, you basically you could purchase a dongle which mimics the battery of your camera. You stick it in and then you plug in the other end. It has an adapter for an outlet. And so you have perpetual energy. So you never have to worry about the battery. So the setup here that I got is the camera. All I need to do is turn it on. It has endless energy and basically endless memory because it's my computer's recording and it's not dumping the feed into a disc on the camera. This in terms is what the what I'm using to capture the video. It seems like a lot. The camera is a bit pricey. The lens, I think, is also a bit pricey. I inherited this from my wife. She, when she was in college, she was an amateur photographer and she, she had a bunch of lenses that she wasn't using. So I just happened to have this. And the generic lens that just comes, the default standard lens that comes with the camera, perfectly fine. It's just I'm in a low light situation and I needed something that could um, not create a distracting image. Okay, let's move on. Uh, in terms of recording and audio, nothing fancy either. The fanciness occurs on the software end. All you need is just like a device that a, is not whatever is on like a PC speaker or a webcam. You just get any, any microphone. This is a $15 microphone that I got on Amazon. It was slightly more expensive because it had the um, hookup to attach to your desk and anything will do other than the little cam little <laughs> microphone you get from the webcam and this is straightforward it's a USB microphone just plug and play other stuff I needed oh the uh, the tripod to hold up the camera I'm using actually an old copy stand that I inherited when I first arrived here at USF. It was in the lab. I thought it was a cool apparatus. I didn't know what it was originally, but it was like this old piece of metal that you attach a camera to and you could take pictures of books or other pictures on it. I just rigged it so that it holds my camera. And then finally the selfie ring, the light source. Lighting is the number one challenge in making videos look good. This will be the part that gives you the biggest headache at all. And it really, you could have the nicest camera on the planet. And if your lighting is not good, the video is not going to be good. There's no way you'll ever be able to fix it. So if there's one thing you do need, if you uh, want to take this kind of stuff a little bit more seriously, you need to use a good lighting source. I'm happy with the selfie ring. This again is something I inherited from my wife. Uh, when we uh, transitioned online uh, during the pandemic, she's an attorney. She also had to transition online to, to do trials. She needed something to make her look good. <laughs> you know, being an attorney, there's some sort of a performance component to that. Uh, but she's, she's not online anymore. Uh, She's doing all of, all of it face to face again. And so now I have her stuff, which is also just a cheap, cheap light of like 15 bucks. Um, the added bonus of these lights though, it comes with a little tripod, which you can use for your camera. And so when I have my setup at home, I tend to use that tripod to hold the camera. And then I use like a bunch of boxes to hold up the light, nothing fancy. Last thing I want to talk about is the, what, device I'm using to record the videos and to do all of these um, transitions is uh, my little uh, Dell Latitude, which is a five-year-old tablet. They, they don't make these things anymore. A refurbished one, you could probably get it for about 150, 200 bucks. Um, it is really underpowered in terms of CPU capabilities it just has two cores but the two redeeming features it has which I don't have here in my office in my office computer is it has a GPU and so that really accelerates all the graphic um, needs that you could possibly ever want when you're recording a video 
And on top of that, I think the other thing that I didn't think initially would be very useful is the solid state drive, the hard drive. It's fast. And so it allows you to record things without any hiccups. And I think those two things, the GPU and the uh, SSD card, the solid state drive, is what allows me to do all this seamlessly, um, even on an underpowered machine. I mean, this thing I cannot really use to do our stuff on it, um, but it's perfectly amazing to do record videos. And so this is my physical setup. It seems like a lot. Um, again, this is what I... Whoa! This is what I converged on for my setup at, uh, at the university. I use this for all my courses, all my Zoom meetings, conferences. Um, in total, I think, unfortunately, if you really add up the numbers, the hardware setup probably comes up to um, 800 bucks. And if you wanted this and you bought stuff from scratch now, it would be way more expensive. Just the, the camera and the computer is the, by far the most expensive stuff. All Everything I own is super old, right? Camera is 10 years old. The computer is 5 years old. Um, and so if you're really starting to begin this stuff, you know, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to buy an old refurbished digital camera as long as it has like some sort of way to provide a live feed you're good lenses lenses often come with the camera uh, but again my the only reason i'm using this different le lens than you would normally is because i'm in a low light um situation and so when i started uh, the online recording i had all the the most expensive stuff already and really i only had to spend an extra you know, 90 bucks for all the other ancillary things like lighting, microphone, and dongles, and energy stuff. Okay, two more things to cover is the software that I use, and I don't use anything really fancy. Everything I use is very, is free. Um, and then let's quickly do a quick tutorial on how to create one of these things here where you got an image you got an embedded PowerPoint slide and some random text software oh boy this is where it gets kind of fun I use a PowerPoint right yeah, being an academic you kind of use PowerPoint every day for teaching PowerPoint now the 2020 version is fairly incredible it does animations movies you could edit you could record you could live stream off powerpoint if you wanted to uh, you could create uh, gifs um, it really is like a toolkit for anything that you could think of whatsoever but of course if you want to do the fancy stuff like this whoa then you got to use the software and this is where Streamlabs OBS software there's a bunch of OBS software out there this is open broadcaster software um, it's basically like what you would find in a football game where you know you they're, they're recording something live but you get a whole bunch of embellishments with the feed with the video basically I'm doing the same here right I'm recording this li live with all these um, cuts and transitions it's just all built into the software so when i record it i can be like oh hi how's it going welcome to my course um and this is all run by streamlabs it's free it's fairly amazing there's other software out there they're just like obs i don't know why i ended up using streamlabs in the first place uh, but I think I liked it because it was fast. It was super easy to get started. I mean, it was the, really the least of my worries in terms of rigging up an online uh, teaching setup. And um, it's after you play around with it, it's very intuitive. It's set up a little bit like PowerPoint where you have like a slide, your window, and you just populate it with different things. 
and what you could populate you could populate it with anything you want you know I got the PowerPoint but you could use uh, HTML you could have videos you could have anything you think of you know if you look at any online streamer that's what they're using for all the weird dynamic visuals of like little windows and little characters jumping around and when you got like somebody who gives you money for some reason you know there's like a little pop-up you could do all that in this in this software this is what it's meant to do but i use it for teaching because it allows me to do cool stuff really fast with no overhead in terms of learning what to do um powerpoint i'm not really going to spend much time on powerpoint i feel like that's fairly commonly used but again, um, I'm impressed by the latest version of PowerPoint because it does really allow you to do a lot more video editing, streaming, recording, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, fairly amazing. Okay, okay, I gotta move on. So I'm gonna jump into OBS here. This is gonna be a weird setup because I'm recording in OBS and I'm gonna show you how to record in OBS at the same time. <laughs> Let's see if this works out. So I'm gonna jump into OBS. What I'm hoping is you see is the window. Here's my PowerPoint slide. So you, I'm just doing a screen capture of my desktop here. So this is what I see when I'm recording. This is what I allows me to kind of jump back and forth uh, from videos when I toggle between these things. So this is like, for example, my splash pad with the medical entomology stuff. This is how I know my microphone is working. And uh, the microphone does have uh, many, many settings. You could adjust the volume. I have a an additional uh, filter, which is uh, what you call additional embellishments by Streamlabs to uh, modify the output. And I have a um, noise suppressor activated on my microphone. This is run by Streamlabs. And that's because my office is actually fairly loud. I, across the hall, there's like this machine popping thing that goes on all day. It just pss, pss, and you, I don't think you hear it in a video. This is because the Streamlabs is suppressing that level of noise that is just in the background all the time. And so this is the navigation window where you jump between scenes. Right, so if I want to do PowerPoint, I jump here. This is all done before I record the video. So for example, when I start a semester, I usually create a splash screen. A, 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 this is a, a splash screen. And then I got a talking screen. And then I got my PowerPoint screen. And then I got my end window where I summarize things. And then I emphasize various um, jobs and tasks that are done. And all I need to do is just toggle between these preset windows and it and then uh, Streamlabs organizes all that stuff, saves it, you know, and it also creates all the animations and the transitions to make things look cool, right? So, right, the drop down, that's the Streamlabs, it's just switching the scene. You could do all that stuff. You could spend all day tinkering with it. These are the quick ones that I figured out to get the what I needed. To make something decent decently looking cool okay so let's go into uh, Streamlabs here I'm gonna kind of mess up my setup for you guys just so you could see how to quickly create a video so we have windows within windows here which is nonsense and so I'm just gonna cover this up with some um, a color source and the color source is basically your background and I'm going to make it uh, black, right? So it allows you to do like all these uh, things. You could change the alpha value of it, this to make it transparent if you want to look at something cool. I'm going to um, transform it. I'm going to just uh, stretch it to screen so you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so the goal is to just, whatever you see in this black area here is what gets recorded. And so I'm gonna include the live feed from the camera. Then I'm gonna add some text. And, and then I'm gonna add the PowerPoint slide and then I'll just end the video with that. Um, I guess the goal is to make it look like this, 
All right, so this is stuff right here is the PowerPoint. Then I got some little context text, and then I got an image. Okay, first things first, this is the sources window. It's so easy to add stuff. So there's a lot of things you could add, images, add HTML browser stuff. So if you're surfing on the web, slideshows, game capture, yeah, I mean, this all this is kind of set up for gamers to um, stream on Twitch or whatever. But I'm going to do a uh, media source, I mean a uh, video capture. I'm just going to add my camera to it. It's already there, and so I'm really going to mess up this image here. Um, it's going to detect my device, and there's a lot of cameras already so like for example this is a camera on my laptop that is facing a bunch of beetles it's going to take a while for i should not have clicked there we go right so <laughs> it's it's pointing towards a book and so but i'm going to pick the ones that is for providing the feed for my camera now this is an unfiltered feed it's going to look a little different from um what I've done with what I had beforehand, right? So this is the exact image that's coming out from my camera. I mean, it's fairly nice, uh, but it's a compromise because it's because it's based on the firmware of the camera. It's not making use of the full image. So if I was using the HDMI output, I would have a full image here, but there's here, there's a bunch of uh, blank space. So if I stretch out The image I still got these bars here and so typically what I do is you could do alt and then crop the image and if I want the image full screen then I just kind of stretch it out manually like this now uh, I always kind of have a dark spot here on the side that's fine with me I mean I always have a PowerPoint thingamajig here that covers it all up now this image is perfectly fine on its own. I like to just add an additional layer of filter here on it um, just to clean up the image. There's already a bunch of preset ones like if you want to do a black and white image or if you want to do a fancy colorized version. I like to add a more, a more professional palette to the colors and so I'm going to add a what's a, called a LUT or LUT which is just a palette of colors that it transposes on the image. The one I use is called a Z for some reason. And just watch the difference, right? So th this is the actual feed for my camera. And then this is after applying the filter. Right, so things are like uh, more sharper, uh, less fuzzy. And that, this is what I like. Um, then I'm going to add a little bit of text for context. I mean, the flexibility of this is incredible. You can do whatever you want, whatever font you want. You stretch it out. It's like PowerPoint. You just stretch it out. You put it wherever you want. And that be, just becomes a fixed piece of text on your image. You can write medical and applied entomology, your Twitter handle, whatever. And then finally, we just need to add a PowerPoint. So for that, we do a window capture. I make sure you got your PowerPoint window open. We're going to add a source, and it just gives you a listing of all the software that you have open on your device. I got PowerPoint open. And... Um, Right, so this kind of looks slightly different from what I got right now because mine is cropped to hide all this extra stuff in the window. And basically this is what, you know, the now I'm in PowerPoint, you could do all these things all right, so here's my PowerPoint window. I'm just going to move it. 
so you can't see it. Ugh. Let me close, narrow this thing. So this is like, the, you can just see flat out what the PowerPoint is. I put it in uh, projector mode. And then I roll through the slides. Right, and then in the PowerPoint itself it has the different transition animations already put in and the videos are put into the PowerPoint slide, which play automatically as you change slides. Okay, so I need to just quickly fix a few things uh, to get my old fashioned feedback, uh, but I'm basically done. Uh, with the video now, this is my setup. This is what I use to uh, record stuff. I messed up. <laughs> As you can tell, it's not straightforward. Um, but I'll end it anyway. So thanks for watching. This is my setup. In my quick tutorial on recording stuff, clearly you do not want to edit the streaming software while you're recording. Otherwise, you get hiccups like this. But um, <laughs> anyway, I think that makes for a nice end to um, what I got. And I, if I have time, I'll, I'll do an additional video on my setup at home. But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Um, Streamlabs OBS, that's really the, the magical piece of software that allows me to do all these transitions. And it really facilitates uh, creating videos. I do not have to edit videos because all of it's done in real time. All right. Uh, thanks for watching.